The reduction of Arctic sea ice cover and melting of the permafrost has accelerated. Climate change. Parts of Newport Beach are flooded tonight. The record high temperatures. The immediate threat posed by climate change is on full display in Greenland. Glaciers there are melting at an alarming pace, which could lead to a devastating sea level rise. Extreme temperatures. That will drive even more warming and, in turn, means we can expect more extreme weather. When there's a disturbance to the Earth's balance, a response happens to mitigate it and maintain balance. But some responses can also accelerate the disturbance, which could be harmful to the planet. Therefore, it is important to understand the different disturbances to Earth and the responses they trigger to better understand climate science. Before we get started, here's a brief overview of topics that we will cover in this video. First up is climate forcings, including changes in solar insulation and changes in the atmosphere. Next, we will explore climate feedbacks with positive and negative feedback loops. And finally, we will discuss the implications of the ice albedo feedback loop and how it relates to global warming. We will talk about two climate forcings today. A climate forcing is an imposed or external change in the planet's energy balance. By offsetting Earth's balance, these forcings drive the climate to change, which is why they are important. Solar insulation is the amount of radiation that hits the Earth from the sun, and it's our first example of a climate forcing. Solar insulation can be defined as the amount of solar energy that falls on a specified area over time. A change in solar insulation can disturb the existing energy balance. The amount of solar insulation hitting Earth can vary depending on several factors, such as Earth's orbit and tilt, clouds, dust, water vapor, and more. And even though the solar insulation is aimed at Earth, not all of it actually impacts the surface temperature. Only 70% of it actually reaches the surface, while about 30% is reflected back into outer space. That raises the question of, what is responsible for this reflectivity? The answer to this question is albedo. Albedo is the fraction of light that is reflected by a body or surface. For example, a white car has a high albedo, while a black car has a low albedo. This is because white is a lighter color and reflects the sun's rays, while black is a darker color, which will absorb the sun's rays. After two hours, we found out the black car clocked in at 131 degrees, while the white car's interior was 113. Wow. As you may have experienced, a black car sitting in the sun will quickly get hot, while a white car will stay cooler. The same concept can be applied to snow and ice, which is white, and therefore has a high albedo while water appears dark and therefore has a low albedo. Now onto our second example of climate forcings, which is the growing presence of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. A greenhouse gas is any gas that absorbs infrared radiation emitted from Earth's surface and traps the heat in the atmosphere. This is known as the greenhouse effect. The most common and important greenhouse gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane. Greenhouse gases are a climate forcing because they affect Earth's energy balance, and a change in greenhouse gases will cause the climate to change. Science and history have shown that human actions can and do impact greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere. Since the Industrial Revolution, humans have been emitting more and more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The rise of CO2 is one of the primary forcings responsible for global warming. Before getting into the implications of this, let's first go over how Earth reacts to the rise in CO2 through its climate feedback loops. We will now introduce the concept of positive and negative feedback loops in preparation for our discussion on Earth's climate feedback. Positive feedback loops can be defined as a system that amplifies the forcing acting upon it, while a negative feedback loop is a system that reduces the forcing acting upon it. We will begin by going over simple examples of both types of feedback loops, starting with an example of a positive feedback loop. In most cases, as the number of study hours increases, the likelihood of high grades increases, which encourages a student to study more. To begin putting together this feedback loop, we have to look at the relationship between each variable. Since the increased amount of studying makes the grades increase, this is a positive relationship. Similarly, good exam grades will encourage the student to study more, which is also a positive relationship. We can draw these relationships in a cycle in order to better visualize the feedback loop. Here we can see that the whole feedback loop is positive. We denote the loop as positive with a plus sign in the middle. Now let's take a look at an example of a negative feedback loop. 
This negative feedback loop describes something that everyone should be familiar with, which is shivering when it gets cold. As body temperature decreases, shivering increases, which increases body temperature. Notice that a decrease in body temperature causes an increase in shivering, which is a negative relationship. And an increase in shivering causes an increase in body temperature, which is a positive relationship. When drawing the feedback loop, we notice that one relationship is negative, while the other relationship is positive. This feedback loop is negative, so we draw a negative sign in the middle. A tip to figure out whether or not a feedback loop is positive or negative is the number of negative signs that a feedback loop has. If the loop has an even number of negative signs or no negative signs, then it's a positive feedback loop. But if the loop has an odd number of negative signs, then it's a negative feedback loop. Note that when we talk about feedback loops as positive or negative, this doesn't mean that they're good or bad. Positive and negative just refer to the way that a disturbance is either amplified or reduced. We are now ready to explore the fascinating climate feedbacks that take place on Earth. We will begin by thinking about the ice albedo feedback. As the amount of greenhouse gases such as atmospheric carbon dioxide entering the atmosphere increase, Earth's surface temperature increases. An increase in temperature causes more ice to melt. With less ice and more water on the surface of the Earth, the planet's overall albedo decreases. A decreased albedo means less incoming solar insulation is being reflected and more is being absorbed. This takes us back to the temperature. When more solar insulation is being absorbed, the Earth gets hot, like the inside of a black car, and the Earth's surface temperature increases. We can now assign a plus or negative sign to each relationship to denote the positive or negative relationship. Then, we will add them all up in the end to see whether it is a positive or a negative feedback loop. Atmospheric CO2, which is the forcing, increases, and so the temperature increases too. This is a positive, or amplifying, relationship. Increased temperatures cause increased melting, also a positive relationship. Now here we have an increase in melting causing a decrease in albedo. This is a negative relationship because the action causes an opposite reaction. The increase causes a decrease. Next, we have a decrease in albedo causing a decrease in reflectivity of solar insulation. Take a moment to guess whether this is a positive or a negative relationship. You can also think of this in terms of amplification or reduction. Good guess! The relationship here is positive because the change is amplified. A decrease causes another decrease. Next, we have a decrease of reflectivity causing an increase of absorption. This is a reducing relationship, so the relationship is negative. And finally, we have an increase of absorption causing an increase in temperature, which is a positive relationship. To see whether the whole feedback loop is positive or negative, we count the number of minus signs. The feedback loop has two minus signs, which is an even number. So the ice albedo feedback loop is a positive feedback loop. On to our last feedback loop example. This cycle describes the feedback between evaporation and cloud formation. As atmospheric CO2 increases, surface temperatures rise. This will cause an increase in evaporation, which causes more cloud formation. Since clouds are white and reflective, more clouds result in more reflection of solar insulation. As more solar insulation is being reflected into space, surface temperatures tend to decrease. From the relationships between all of the variables, we can see that there is one negative relationship. This means that it's a negative climate feedback loop. Implications. It's important to be able to distinguish the positive and negative feedback loops that act within the Earth's climate system because, as we've seen, they either amplify or reduce the forcing, which results in different effects. A current topic of concern in our world today is how the increase of greenhouse gases is driving the ice albedo feedback loop to a tipping point. A tipping point is a threshold in the climate system that, when surpassed, can lead to large changes in the state of the system, which can be irreversible. A good way to visualize this is with a ball rolling over hills. When the ball is pushed past the crest of the hill, it falls down to a trough, making it very difficult to get back to the starting point. The tipping point that we are concerned with has to do with melting glaciers and Arctic ice, specifically the Greenland ice sheet. Increasing levels of atmospheric CO2 warm the atmosphere, leading to the melting of these ice sheets. The ice albedo feedback contributes to the acceleration towards the tipping point, because as we have seen, this positive feedback loop accelerates climate warming, causing more ice to melt. Once enough ice has melted, the system crosses a tipping point where the ice volumes will not be able to return to pre-warming amounts. 
even if global temperatures stop rising. Greenland's ice is melting on average seven times faster today than it was in 1990. This could lead to catastrophic events such as the unprecedented sea level rise that could inundate cities like Miami, Manhattan, Houston, and more. Not only are these consequences basically irreversible, but our society is not equipped or prepared to handle the effects. When the Earth experiences a climate forcing, the negative climate feedback loops act to reduce the forcing and maintain Earth's equilibrium. But Earth's positive feedback loops amplify these forcings, which can lead to an acceleration of global warming. Therefore, it's important to differentiate between positive and negative feedback loops within the climate system to consider their effect on global warming. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with your friends and family and take time to become aware of the current state of the climate.